This is episode 270 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. Welcome back to the show. Today I have Jude Gomes on and Jude is a very young guy, very ambitious entrepreneur. Uh, he got himself into the wholesaling space, uh, specifically with multifamilies. And in today's episode, he just goes deep on everything he's done, uh, how he's built out his business, what he's doing on his uh, VA business. So he also has an active business uh, helping people staff themselves with virtual assistance. Uh, just an absolute go-getter. And uh, it was a great episode, really. Uh, really interesting conversation and I really enjoyed it. And I think you're going to get a lot out of it. If you're kind of wondering about what your next step is, and maybe you're thinking, Hey, maybe I'm not ready for this or not sure if you want to, you know, take the plunge into uh, a fairly ambitious endeavor. Well, hopefully Jude gives you some confidence and I think he will uh, in this episode. So uh, just before we get into the show, if you could show the channel some love, if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit all those buttons to uh, make it get out there more. And then, of course, if you're on the uh, one of the audio platforms, if you would kindly leave a rating or review, five stars would be greatly appreciated just to help get this out there. Uh, so let's jump into the episode with Jude Gomes. Hello and welcome to the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. I've got Jude Gomes on the show, a recommendation from a previous guest, Austin uh, Ye. So Jude, thanks for, for coming on. Yeah, no, I appreciate you having me. I'm, I'm really excited to, to get into my story and what I've been able to, to do. Yeah, so Austin spoke super highly of you, uh, yeah. said that you're in into wholesaling. He's like, this guy's got it figured out. He yeah. knows exactly <laughs> what he's doing, super young. And, um, and uh, yeah, so I'm sure he didn't... Uh, didn't oversell. I'm, I'm looking forward to the story. So, do you mind uh, just giving me sort of high level uh, what you've you know what you've done, sort of what yeah. led you to be uh, here sitting in this seat? Yeah, of course. First of all, like this is probably one of the first podcasts I've ever uh, listened to when I first started my journey. So it's really cool just being here now. So, but yeah. So generally speaking, um, I started off when I was 19 years old. I bought my first property, but before yeah. that. Um, as a kid growing up, I've always been kind of entrepreneurial uh, mm-hmm. minded. Um, I started working when I was nine years old doing newspaper deliveries, um, saw my buddies doing it. So I just got into it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, saved up pretty much everything. I like I did that for three years. I <clears throat> d- throughout middle school, I started um, working jobs and buying and selling things. Just always mm-hmm. had that sort of entrepreneur I- in me and uh, going into high school. Um, same thing, just worked throughout high school, worked at Walmart, worked part-time jobs. And uh, by the time I was grade 11, I was working full-time while I was in mm-hmm. high school. So for whatever reason I did that, I just wanted to save up money, never spent yeah. anything, just saved and saved and saved, always been kind of frugal. And yeah, by the time I was grade 12, I pretty much was failing all my classes, just didn't really do well in school. And uh, my parents were like, okay, quit everything, uh, you know, go become an engineer and uh, get your grades up. So I did that. I um, pretty much brought my grades from 50s and 60s all the way up to 80s and 90s, got into engineering school. Um, But obviously I had to quit all my entrepreneur stuff like during high school. And yeah, getting into uni first year, same thing. I just had to focus on my grades and classes, um, get like kind of just make sure that I have a good uh, path into Mm -hmm. like adulthood, right? So I... Uh, that was the same year of COVID. So I, my second half of first year university, I um, like COVID hit, and then um, I like had to like I had a lot of free time on my hands. Mm-hmm. So I started getting into other kind of entrepreneurial journeys, like stocks and bonds and and index funds. And I started doing a lot of research because I had a lot of time on my hands. So I I started watching a lot of Graham Stephan. Uh, and there was one specific Graham Stephan video with Matt McKeever in London, Ontario. He was like driving around, showing off all, all of his properties. And he recommended a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So that's mm. that's pretty much the thing that really changed my trajectory when it comes to uh, like entrepreneurship and business and real estate. I just knew, okay, I want to buy properties. I just don't know how. I sort of have some money saved up. And that's kind of what changed the trajectory for me. So um, by the time I graduated high school, I had like 20 grand saved up, just didn't spend anything. And around the same time, I met my girlfriend, Cleantha. So she also had a very similar upbringing, like saved all of her money, worked throughout high school and, and earlier days. And then we sort of pooled our money together, bought our first property when we were 19 in Windsor, Ontario. And yeah, so since then, we were able to kind of scale up our portfolio, uh, get into multifamily. We recently closed on a 10-unit building. And yeah, that's where we are right now. 
and that's how kind of how it got started. So 2019 start? 2020, uh, 2021 January was our first property. And you guys bought that at 19 years old? Yeah. yeah. So how old does that make you now? 20, I'm 22. 22? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you got started early. That's good. Yeah. So you're already into multifamily. Yeah. And is that your first one? Um, no, I have a sixplex and a fourplex as well. All in Windsor? Uh, no. So Windsor, I, I bought in Chatham as well and Sarnia. I flipped, I flipped as well. So um, kind of southwestern Ontario regions. Okay. Yeah. And uh, like from what I understand, wholesaling is a part of what you do now. Yeah. I, I, did you, first off, did you finish the engineering degree? I'm still doing it right now. I'm in my last year. So I'm just finishing. So you're still the, going to university yeah. full time? <laughs> yeah. Like I was there yesterday. <laughs> oh, yeah. What school are you at? I'm at Ryerson, downtown. Toronto. Ryerson. Yeah. So what kind of engineering? It's industrial. Yeah. Okay. Are you are you seeing yourself getting your PNG or? Um. No, definitely not PNG. Um. I'm gonna graduate. I I'll have it under my belt, and then you know continue probably real estate full time. Yeah. I mean, you got to look at what you've done so far, and like no one, the typical engineer's path, like. Yeah. I don't know if anyone tracks it in terms of like net worth of engineer graduates, and I'm sure it does spike after a few years because yeah. you start earning you know a higher pay grade. But uh, what you're doing, the potential is obviously much larger. Yeah, of course, yeah. So, like after I bought my first property, I was like, I just wanted to buy more. I need, mm -hmm. I, although I had zero money after putting that down payment, I just wanted to figure out how to scale up a portfolio. So yeah. we, um, I got in, like that's why I got into wholesaling to build up some capital. Um, I was reaching out to sellers off market, expired listings, canceled listings, client and my partner, her parents are both real estate agents. So, so they give you guys leads? <laughs> not really leads, but they, yeah. I, I'm able to use their platforms and kind of, yeah. you know, like try to find sellers and contact yeah. them off market and stuff. So is that, your, so you're not like direct mailing people? I am. I am. I'm yeah. doing that as well. Um, I'm, but for me right now, I'm focusing more on the multifamily sort of wholesaling. So I'm sending letters directly to these owners of buildings yeah. and uh, just trying to get in contact yeah that's pretty critical so like geo warehouse basically yeah for the most now part. but you don't get numbers so you're just mailing them um so okay how i did start off was um i i i met a mentor actually after i bought my first property i was just listening to webinars and and uh, getting out there in the space so he i was kind of asked him hey like what types of buildings are you looking for and what areas what locations i'll definitely find you something off market so he told me He's looking for something in southwestern Ontario, like London, Chatham, Sarnia, Windsor. So, ever, like since that, I, I I spent maybe three, four months building up an entire database of every single uh, multifamily property in those areas, and then found out like what the titles are, like what they purchased it for, when they bought it, and I kind of. So we're talking like thousands of like, records. Like thousands, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. like, would like two thousand be a rough ballpark? Um. I would say just more than that. Southwestern Ontario? Yeah. I mean, I, so I kind of built Windsor? it up since then, but... Yeah. Okay. But yeah. So it could be like 5,000 records of different different buildings. Yeah. yeah definitely. Okay. Definitely. And out of that, you just have mainly mailing addresses of the so, responsible like, parties. So now I've probably been doing it for like two, three years now. So I've been able to kind of like develop certain strategies that help me mm. source their contact information. Like right. I... I Typically, you send them a letter at the very last option, like if I can't find the contact, but I do spend some time. So you could, like a lot of people, you could probably Google search, find yeah, something. Find some of them have like a, like I've searched people that way. Uh, one of them was a dentist. Like I found it was a buyer of a property near yeah. one I was selling. I'm yeah. like, I want to find out who bought that. Maybe he wants to buy mine. So yeah. I look him up. He's a dentist. I call his office. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's pretty much what it is. There's yeah. so many different ways. There's like, yeah. their LinkedIn. You can find out where they work. You can email the place of work and yeah. try to get their email. Yeah. Um, so a lot of work. So you, you just keep doing that adding the information to the list yeah uh no crm is like it all google sheets just or? all google sheets for now yeah, yeah it's interesting like some people just live by google sheets yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i started to get into the crm system but it's just like i i have a nice system right now yeah you I'm, don't need it you don't it's so yeah. funny like there's people who have thriving businesses with google sheets yeah. but uh, I've been working on Podio lately and it's pretty like okay. pretty robust. Like it's very slick yeah. in terms of how it uh, tracks and manages leads. Okay. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that's cool that you're doing that. So uh, do you do you get into going in uh, to City Hall and looking like tax lookups at no, all? Or not no? really. Like I, I know people do that if they don't have the, you know, Geo Warehouse. Well, because that's where the mailing address comes from, right? Geo Warehouse doesn't typically have so mailing address. So you can buy the like title reports. Oh, okay. You can buy them. It's, it's like 2 $3 each. So yeah, and cool. that'll have the, then you'll have a mailing address. Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. So that helps a lot. Yeah, <laughs> but that's like yeah. I said, it's more of like a final option. I usually try to find their phone number or email address. So then, in, if 
if you do get their phone number, you're just yeah. calling them and saying, hi, yeah. I, just, I saw you on this building. Yeah. Are you interested in selling it? So I do do that, but I, I first try to introduce myself because realistically I can't buy or wholesale everything. Like most deals don't really make sense. So I just introduce myself, say I'm active in this market. I, you know, I, I know a lot of investors as well. Like if you're ever looking to sell, you know, like, like let me know, but, but regardless, I would love to make a connection with you and, and, you know, keep in yeah. touch. Yeah. Tell like, I'd like to dig into that a bit more because these people are, are, cold to you right like yeah you know they, they don't know you like why are you calling me <laughs> yeah i mean some of them probably yeah. dodge your call for quite some time because they don't answer random numbers yeah uh so how do you like get people's guard down when you get them on the phone um like i would say in multifamily, it's it's a lot different like like atmosphere like if if someone like if someone owns a building and you know they they're talking to someone else that also owns properties or or they're in the space it's they, they're willing to hear you yeah. at least right so i find that it's it's uh like if if you show yourself with credibility and you're, yeah. you're you know you're assertive and you know what you're talking about then they don't really question you and they kind of let their guard down and yeah. generally speaking like if you own buildings and you're yeah. trading you're buying and selling like um it's good to have a, like a buyer's buyer's like list of yeah. sorts right so um like it's not easy to offload a it's not very easy to offload a building in Ontario. So if they have a buyer in front of them and maybe they've thought about selling in the past, then, yeah. you know, they, they're willing to hear you out, right? Do you just say, you know, hi, hi, my name's Jude. I'm actually an investor in the area. I yeah. saw that you own this building. Yeah. I was just curious. Do you have a moment to chat? Yeah. Something like that. Pretty much. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's actually a nice way of getting into it. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? You're an investor? Oh, you invest in London? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they usually like, oh, where do you like, what do you own? Like, like, like who the, do you know? Like, like, yeah, they want to, they're yeah. trying, yeah, yeah. they're testing you out. <laughs> yeah. And so you, you tell them you're all like down Windsor way, Chatham yeah. way, but and you say, I'm looking to expand more into this area. Yeah, pretty much. Like yeah. I, I tell them like I'm from Toronto. Um, like, you know, if Toronto investors probably has money, so they, they, mm -hmm. they easier to kind of get into the, like mm -hmm. the numbers and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow builds a little bit more credibility. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So they don't really press you too hard. Yeah. I own a few buildings here. Yeah. Like we're doing something similar down in, in Florida and I'm actually like, uh, I'm wanting to roll this out for the multifamily owners too. Yeah. Uh, because I want to build, build that out and, and do it with creative financing, like get them to hold, hold the mortgages yeah. back and stuff. So, um, specifically targeting people who've owned for like 20 years plus. Exactly. Th and those are the best ones. Yeah. Down there, it's just way easier though. You can just skip trace them. Oh yeah. So you yeah. can find Here, it's harder. It's a lot harder, <laughs> <laughs> but then that means less competition. So like, I don't. Like there's always an ebb and flow. There's always a give and take. Like yeah. if it's that much easier to get them, yeah. you know, other people are getting them too. Yeah. Yeah. Even like people like even in Ontario, like less people are doing it. And I find that like, it, it seems like they're not really just rushing to hang up the call because they're not really getting many of these calls on a, on a daily or weekly or monthly mm -hmm. basis. But definitely there are some people that are doing what I'm doing, but, um, you know, calling all of the of the people sending letters. But you're building relationships. It's not a quick fix. Exactly. It's not. It's not. Like ideally, I do want to ultimately buy them myself down at some point down the line. So that's why I can't buy yeah. everything right now. So I'm just basically just making the relationship. But why not negotiate with them, try and get the seller financing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. That's, like, that's... You might be. You never yeah. know. You might be able to buy it right away. Like, yeah. It's interesting. I heard a guy tell a story saying that he, he negotiated a VTB on a property 90%. Yeah. Uh, it was a hundred grand property. So very different yeah. numbers. Uh, and like basically the lady said, well, all I, all I want is I want 10 grand down. Like, oh, so wow. she wanted yeah. the 10 grand. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, cause see, great Judy, yeah. uh, you know, would it be all right if I, if I gave you that 10 grand in payments, <laughs> he, he, uh, financed the down payment as well, That's uh, funny. over like a year. Okay. <laughs> so, so he used there's, the rental income on the property to pay yeah, the down payment. There's really creative ways you can, yeah. you can get into deals. Like it's uh, right. interesting. like, and if you don't ask, you'll never know. Right. Like, and I think if you just pour on the brutal honesty of where mm -hmm. you're at, Hey, like. I've accomplished a lot. Like for you, like I'd really lean into like, look, I'm, I'm still in school. I've mm -hmm. already acquired this much property. Mm -hmm. Like I would use that to my advantage because people want to help out students. Yeah. Like, wow, you're a go-getter. <laughs> I wish I had had the smarts to to do that when yeah. I was your age. I, I never really mentioned my age. I never really say I'm in school or anything. Well, like, you don't sound like you're young. Yeah. Like, so that's you, why I you have really... a very mature voice. Yeah. So they would never think that. Yeah. So I never really even mentioned that. Yeah. I try to honestly avoid the question. To be oh, honest. dude, like... you, you should actually try that split test it. Yeah. Try 
it on a few and see how much they light up of, about yeah, it. Yeah. They probably let their guard down even more. Of course, if you're getting their guard down already, no yeah. big deal. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I got to just go to class after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's, yeah. there's been a lot of deals where like, I'm like, it's been two years where I'm just following up, just saying, Hey, like, like just keeping in touch, you know? Yeah. And so I'm curious about that too. So that would be after an initial conversation. Yeah. And what do you aim to do as a follow-up sequence? Um, like honestly, every couple months, I would say like, like for Christmas, I definitely text them or call them, like wish them happy, Merry Christmas, happy Easter. Like if it's any celebration, yeah. I, I definitely do that every, every celebration. And then, and then, yeah, just, just casual follow-ups if you know, yeah. they've thought about selling, you know, just... Yeah. So you've asked somebody if they want to sell, they say, yeah, I'm not ready yet, but it may be in, in a couple of years. Yeah. Do you get like, do you try and get an idea of what they're thinking numbers wise early on? Not, not exactly. Unless like they show some sort of interest and I don't mm -hmm. really, if they don't have any interest and I don't really dive too deep um, mm -hmm. because they, they start getting their guard up when you start talking numbers yeah. and you know, so sure. I, I prefer just making the relationship. No, I like that. Ultimately, yeah. like I do tell them I, I come to Windsor or wherever the property is every month or so. So when next time I'm down there, you know, I can come by, uh, you know, we can meet and have coffee or something like that. And, and usually mm -hmm. I just try to meet them and, and just show my face. Yeah. And so they remember me. So how often are you, uh, meeting with people then? Um, like, I would say at least once a month. I would once set, a month you're having a meeting. I would set up like a day where I go meet up with three, four sellers. Oh, okay. Yeah, like once a month at least. And you're all beaned up by the end of the day. Yeah, I know. I, I do that often because my <laughs> I always have renovations and stuff. So I go yeah. like every two weeks at least, like just making sure everything, all the renovations and stuff are, are you know. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay, so you've you've basically had that initial call. They said, yeah, we're not we're not ready yet. You don't really know their number, and then you're sending them a text later on saying, hey, just want to touch base. Hope you're doing well. Yeah. You don't even mention the property. Um, I try to, like, I try to. <laughs> it's, it's it goes a long way. Yeah. If you like, do you have a company name that you go under? Uh, Fergo Estates is like my yeah. company that I that I mentioned. Like, so you just you just say, hey, it's Jude from Fergo Estates. Yeah. I just wanted to, uh, you know, wish you a Merry Christmas or something like that. Yeah, and uh, I hope you're doing well. And then you just catch up with them another time. Yeah, like I still have a guy that I probably I never referred a single client to back in my mortgage days. He, he was doing like credit repair. I just didn't get that kind of clientele, and. Uh, I think to this day, I'm still on his mailing list. I'll, I'll occasionally get a, <laughs> I haven't got a text in maybe a year or two, but yeah. he would still text me and it, I had never sent him anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, that guy is system oriented. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah that's, I, that's, that's, that's how you win with that consistency of follow-up because eventually these guys are going to be ready to sell and you're going to be the path of least resistance. Exactly. For sure. It's, it, it's a lot harder to really wholesale these apartment building deals. Um, it's, it's more so like I'm doing it long-term for myself to really try and buy these, these properties properties for my, my own por personal portfolio. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like I typically really focus on the ones that have been owned for a very long time. Um, because generally speaking, these people, like they don't want to pay all the taxes at once. So that's where I, the VTB the is going to be huge. Yeah. Like that's, they'd actually want that probably. They exactly. want you to take it because yeah. as soon as they, they take the money, then they realize the gain. And it's a lot easier to yeah. negotiate because they know where the rents are at. They're very low. Like I, I, if I close on this right now, it's probably, I'm probably won't even yeah. be able to get 40, 50% loan to value. So that being said, not many people would be interested in an asset yeah. like this. Like the only way to make it work is with a high mm -hmm. first mortgage or like a, you know, high second yeah. BTB. So I've heard in, in Canada that the limitation is five years. They have like five years to realize the gain on yeah, the sale. Yeah, it is five years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't believe that's the case in the States. Like I believe that they can defer yeah, you can do it entirely. In the States. <laughs> and they can defer it all the way out, which is perfect. Mm. So if you think about like any seller, yeah. uh, you sell anything like now you're, you're able to earn an interest rate return on the full principal rather than, you know, hacking off the top of it with taxes and then going and reinvesting that. Yeah, exactly. Well, plus you got the 1031 they also exchange. Have 1031, yeah. <laughs> which is completely different. Yeah. Game changer. Yeah. It's just, I mean, comparatively just way better yeah. to, yeah. to do business there. But hey, if you're here and you're trying yeah. to make the best of it, <laughs> there's something you got, you got five years. Yeah. So that's still a huge benefit. That gives you a chance to transition the building a bit, yeah. start turning over some tenants and, yeah. and you never know, maybe they're willing to still hold some of the mortgage back after five years too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, uh, typically I, five years. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I try to push for that, but usually speaking, like I try to like, let them know, okay, like we're going to do three years, but I'm going to, my, my goal is to get your money back within one to two, um, turnover. Do they really want that though? Cause they do want to defer the tax. Cause if you give them the money back two years later, now it they're going to pay all the tax. It, it depends. Like depends if they need the money. Like yeah. usually I'm kind of 
convincing them to take the VTB. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time it's that way, like versus because they're gonna have to pay the taxes one way or another, whether it's now or whether it's five right. But I guess the question is like if they don't have a lot of other income sources mm -hmm. or you know maybe like if they if they receive it in different years it won't put them into the top bracket of course yeah. and it'll defer when they pay it, absolutely of course. yeah but most of the time i'm seeing it's just like i've just to convince them like to take the v2 well these guys are probably all in the top bracket all the time anyway yeah. so it doesn't matter when they they get it they're gonna pay it yeah yeah so that kind of ruins it a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah but i've also been like wholesaling like the smaller stuff as well like mm -hmm. um like duplex triplex fourplex kind of thing all right and you're hitting the same those owners up the same way same exact way um yeah. i recently started the mailers um just just because now things are starting to pick up at the market there's a lot more buyers so i've been doing like some paid marketing campaigns um and just doing the walkthroughs and trying to get the deals and like, wholesaling. paid marketing so yeah. as far as is that is that more mailers or is that like Facebook market or um, Facebook? Just, just mailers. For now. Yeah. No, just mailers for now. Mailers only the multifamily lists. Um, no, so mailers are just like location wise. Oh, so you're just yeah. you're just doing the property mapping yeah. tool and just mailing out to houses basically. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that's a very different business though. Yeah, it's more like I guess luck. I, I, I guess you could say in trial and error. Mm -hmm. What air, what locations are better? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What areas have you hit? Um, literally windsor toronto just windsor toronto markets, yeah and what do you find you're spending on on that on the direct mail to get a deal so i would say right now it's it's a weird time where a lot of the calls i'm, I'm getting is is just sellers that bought in the last couple of years that want to get out and have a high mortgage yeah. unfortunately these don't really work out as a wholesale deal like most of the time i'm just referring them to a realtor and get a mm -hmm. you know i get a kickback um but i would say like if i do ten thousand, for example letters like like i'll get you know, maybe within the first week I'll get, you know, I guess, let's say 10 calls or mm -hmm. 10 walkthroughs, let's say, and then I'll be able to like most of the, those people are in the same position. Like they just want yeah. to get out. Um, and then maybe like, you know, one, two deals kind of thing. So 10,000 mailers gets you one to two deals. Yeah. Like and I haven't done like it, 20 grand. I haven't done it that like much to really get yeah. like, actual data, but, but yeah, but I would say like directly going to people is like you get a higher chance like cancel listings expired listings um harder to build big lists out yeah, of that it's, hard, in it's harder to scale really but yeah. it's more it's more like you targeted like you can find the specific properties if you have time like i have time so you can go using like the realtor interface system you can find all the expired listings yep. and then from there you need to basically go and build out your form to have the mailing addresses mm -hmm. and then you'd mail them would you mail merge them like a letter yeah for the most part yeah yeah so it's like a stuffed envelope so not really like you mean like like at once like all at once yeah like i'm saying so you build out your list mm -hmm. but then what are you sending them are you sending them like a flyer or are you sending them an actual uh personally addressed letter it's a personally addressed letter that's what yeah I'm so yeah. stuffed in an envelope do you, you don't stuff those yourself do you i do yeah. you do, <laughs> I, do that, yeah. I put the stamp on myself i lick the envelope <laughs> you myself. write out the address <laughs> by hand. Yeah. how many are you sending um so i'm doing a lot more multifamily right now like yeah. I, I feel like it's a waste of time to really do like the smaller stuff but the multifamily i do it all myself mm. i i even considered handwriting the letters but now i just you will get more opens yeah, on the exactly. handwritten letters. Of course, yeah. Yeah, like it's almost worth paying somebody to I do that. I even staple my business card on it and, and uh, you know. Oh, no, that's cool. Yeah. So how many in a month would you say you mail out? So let's say if I send like 100 or 200, I think the successor is actually really good for multifamily. Like I'll get mm. like at least 10 to 15% people call me back from from sending the letters so yeah that's what I'm really trying to focus on. So it's not too much like I'm... That's always, on the expired listings. So this is on the multifamily directly with the with the geo warehouse. Okay. Um, now on the expired listings, I'm I'm usually just trying to call them, or maybe sometimes I'll even call the agent and see what the what the story is and what happened, right? Yeah. And when you're like mailing, say an off market, um, these are ones you've tried to find their number, couldn't find it. Mm, yeah. And then you just say, okay, I'm gonna mail them. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you mail them, and then you said about fifteen percent of them call you back. Yeah. And say oh, I saw your letter, and what do you say in the letter? Hey, I'm I'm interested, or I'm an investor in your area. Like I literally, if they own multiple properties, I'll yeah. state exactly which properties they own. Um, if it's like I'll if it's under a corp, I'll try to find who owns the corp. But mm -hmm. usually, I just have to address the corp. Like uh, yeah, yeah, because you won't know the name. Yeah, yeah. A lot of these corps, you can't find. Anything. Sometimes, like the mailing address is their home address, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I can find. Or you out can who look owns. up who owns. Yeah, <laughs> if they're in the white pages. Yeah, <laughs> not even that. Like you can geo their their 
or oh geo their house yeah. that's right yeah yeah just lots of work man you yeah. got a va that helps you with all that i do have vas um i actually i run a virtual assisting agency oh yeah we were talking about yeah. that yeah yeah. So that's that's another thing that I'm kind of scaling up on the side as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've had VAs for like like since I first started, um, I they were helping me with like the whole rent collection and emails and and maintenance requests, things like that. And then now I've recently started to scale up like a actual agency where I help other investors and agents mm -hmm. um, like match with a VA uh, from Philippines. And then they right. like I just charge like a extra premium on on the hourly rate. So you go find them and uh, what are their typical skill sets? Um, so so right now I'm only in the mm -hmm. real estate sector. So mm -hmm. uh, it's agents, property managers and uh, investors. So the skill sets are pretty standard throughout throughout the three sectors. But basically they're transaction coordinators. Um, they're good on the phone. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they're able to do like social media marketing um, mm -hmm. and just Canva and posting, things like that. Um, yeah, these are just general skill sets and yeah yeah so what's one of these vas typically going to cost like end cost to somebody buying from you to somebody that would like if so basically i don't i do the screening i do the interview process i do mm -hmm. uh the onboarding process so uh end to end like if someone wants a va from me it would be around like like eight dollars an hour i would say usd mm -hmm. um that's that includes i give them benefits as well to increase retention um, and mm -hmm. that's like health and dental and whatnot. And then that's including taxes and everything. Gotcha. Yeah. So do you have to charge HST on that? No, no. That's just like, like flat fee. No, no. HST. Yeah. Yeah. Would you have to, uh, at a certain point? Um, or? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now, that's, right now you don't. Yeah. 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 Dude, that's interesting. You're into a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really focusing right now on the VA business. Like I, the wholesaling is more so for myself. Like I'm just trying to get deals. You're just trying to build that. Like so what? What's active income for you right now? I guess just the odd deal that you wholesale to somebody else. So active income for me is, is the VA business right now. That's the, that's that, the active. That's so what you I'm don't really, really want to sell the other properties you want to acquire. Them. Yeah. Yeah. You should be pitching them. I think introducing the idea of, uh, Hey, you know what? I was it's wondering if you'd entertain seller financing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they got to express some interest yeah, first. Like how often are these guys uh, reaching out to you saying, Hey, you know what? I think we would consider selling. Like what, what are we looking at? What are we going to be looking at? Like how often? Um, yeah. I, I, it's hard to say, but like it's, it's, I get right now I'm seeing a lot of people wanting to sell now and it's just like, I'm very picky in what I take on. Um, like so they're on your list and they're saying we'd sell, but you're like, nah, I can't yeah. do that. So that's where the wholesaling kind of comes in. Like, mm -hmm. and like I said, it's hard to wholesale these mm -hmm. big multis. Like you need to know buyers directly. You can't just go market like a 28 unit building for sale, like X amount of dollars. Like you know, like I usually position it like I'm the one who's buying it or it's me and an investor mm -hmm. or I have a group of investors or something like that. Um, and, but you put an assignment in there and then you can yeah, just assign it to yeah, somebody else. Yeah. Do you try and negotiate the financing and stuff? Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah so yeah. they'll do a VTB in yeah. second position or they'll do a full VTB. Yeah. Is that common to get a full VTB for yeah, these guys? Yeah. I'm doing one right now. It's like a 90% like 90%. VTB. Like, That's where you want to be. Yeah. <laughs> I would say 95, 90, <laughs> heck a hundred. I, I usually don't say how much would you hold back? I usually say how much do you, how much cash do you need in your hand and how much mortgage? Yeah. It's a great way. How much do you have? Like mortgage do you that's have? That's a great way of asking it. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, yeah, you should talk to Jake before you leave. I can see him from here. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, he's, uh, he does a lot in the multifamily space. So yeah. you two probably can connect on stuff. Um, give me some examples of, of some of your, your, your tricks, like your, your questions. Cause you've probably found in talking to these, these sellers that there are certain questions that really work well. Like you said, how much do you need in your pocket right now? And, uh, maybe give me some of the backstory on that stuff. Sure. So. I guess like the the whole way I really learned all this is because mm -hmm. I, I really learned from my mentor Mina. So he he owns like three at least three hundred units right now. Like I mm -hmm. I took a whole year off school during uni and I worked for him. I literally just was his acquisitions manager. I got him a bunch like some apartment building deals. Um, I all I did was just get him acquire him deals or talk to owners and we would go walkthroughs together. Um, and then and then yeah, I also helped him manage his properties like the tenant like onboarding the uh, contractors managing like the whole maintenance required yeah. everything and that's how i started with the vas because um i i helped him onboard and train his his va and then mm -hmm. so so basically all all i really know about multifamily came from him and that's the reason why i'm 22 and i'm buying you know 10 unit buildings or yeah whatnot if only like everybody no, i don't think everybody that'd be a good thing for all of us but 
I mean, if I had the foresight to, to do something like that, you yeah. know, like to go just work, like I had no idea at the time. I didn't know what I didn't know. And it's like this concept of just go take a job doing what you actually want to do, yeah. learning, like yeah. go work a crap job for somebody who does what you want to do. Yeah. Why did that not occur to me <laughs> when I was younger? <laughs> like I sort of did at, in like in 2010, I, I got my mortgage license. I didn't want to be a mortgage agent, yeah. but I wanted to, to work under Carmen because I, you know, she was buying buildings. She was the only investor I knew of. Yeah. And uh, so I just like wanted to work for her. But, uh, you know, this, it would have been so much different. Like, I, I can't say I wouldn't have gone to university because I wouldn't have met my wife, but uh, I don't think it's necessary at all. Mm-hmm. And I, I would much rather have just gone and worked for somebody like you did. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you did university too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, my, my plan was honestly not even to go back to university. Like mm-hmm. I was just going to, yeah. like, I wanted to potentially partner on some of these deals that I would get him and, and uh, like ultimately just not go back. But I did decide, you know, make the parents happy, get the degree and, and yeah. finish off with that. So. Well, I mean, fortunately for you, it's like it's not nearly as expensive for a Canadian to go to school here. Although it is, like, it does add up. But are you were you able to make money the whole way and like sort of yeah, pay for I, it? I definitely made made like money on an acquisition basis. Like it was not yeah. like salary or anything. It was just per acquisition. But you made some money so that you could pay for your tuition and stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like whereas like so many people, including myself, like went into debt. Like I did work in the summers, but I couldn't make it. Like Ivy was like twenty grand a year yeah, and yeah. plus living, yeah. <laughs> interest payments on the loans I was taking out. Like that's what I think is a terrible model. Because yeah. you, you know, people go into trades and stuff, they start making 80 grand, 100 grand right off the bat yep. while living with mom and dad, saving up a ton of money so they can buy a house. Yeah. Like yeah. that to me is just like, it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially in today's age. But uh, I love the hustle that you're doing. Like just, you know, you made it work regardless. You did the school and, you know, you'll have benefits from that. Mm-hmm. And you're probably never going to use it other than <laughs> <laughs> other than it polished you. And uh, now you're going to go out and yeah. become, you know, insanely wealthy doing all the different things you're yeah. doing. Yeah. I at like least now, at least now I can tell the sellers, like, I'm an engineer. <laughs> at least they'll mm-hmm. say, okay, cool. This guy, you know, he's maybe he's making big yeah. money. It's all your shtick, yeah. man. Like, <laughs> uh, just brutal honesty. People just resonate with that, I think. Yeah. Like, no matter what your situation is, just be honest. Like, uh, I know some people like they, you know, they'll they'll answer when they get pressed if they're new. Like, well, I took a, to be honest, I took an online course, learned how to do yeah. this, and I just threw myself <laughs> at it. Yeah. Like, well, at least you're honest. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess yeah, to answer your question, like, what are, like certain things that I say to yeah. to sellers? So definitely one, like I always ask, like like how much more, like if you don't mind me asking, like how much how much more how much you owe on the property? Yeah. Um, if I kind of, before I meet them, I, I always kind of get an idea like when they bought it. If they bought it in, you know, 1970, I automatically assume they don't have any mortgage. But mm-hmm. if they bought it anywhere from 2000 to 2010, I assume a very low mortgage. And if they bought it 2010 and to now, it's like probably like, you know, medium, like medium size. Yeah. Um, and I usually stay away from anyone that's bought buildings within the last like couple of years, just because yeah. it's not really any, like, unless they bought it really cheap and I offer them still a cheap price. But usually, generally speaking, it's hard to make low like, a deal like that work yeah. unless you're just buying like, on a you know per door basis you get private financing and you do all that but i'm that's not the kind of game i'm in because i don't have partners or anything it's just me yeah. me and my girl just us two and uh yeah we're buying these ourselves and yeah turning them over so your girlfriend what's what's her plan is she just wants to work this business with you yeah she's a realtor full-time so that's that's she graduated engineering as well like she's and then gets a real estate license uh she did that while she was in school actually oh my goodness (laughs) what was the point (laughs) (laughs) well her parents are both realtors so they they kind of encourage her to to get into that um and yeah 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 she might as well have just gone and be a realtor at 18 and i know some people would say like at 18 no one's going to take you seriously but Mm -hmm. look at what you've done Mm -hmm. like you know you there's just no excuses anymore. Like, just go hustle. Yeah. 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 You can do it any way you I mean, want. yeah. I mean, I would say for anyone young, like, the real, the real thing that really changed my direction was the reading Rich Dad Poor Dad. Like, that's the, yeah. like, stacking up assets. I was, like, made it a goal by, like, 30. You know, I'll get, you know, X amount of doors or units, and then I'll be able mm-hmm. to live off just that. And then on top of that, I'll have, like, a whatever active sort of thing. Yeah. Right? But now it's things are kind of changing. I know long term I want to keep buying buildings and then have the, you know, VA yeah. business as, like, a like active income for per se. Yeah, it's great, man. Like once you start treating a business like a business, and this is a big shift for me in that I, I tried not to ever think of myself as a doer, mm-hmm. more the visionary and the overseer. Mm-hmm. So I give, give direction, oversee, come up with the ideas. Uh, but really I try and cut myself out of the process as much as I can and empower others to do it. 
and that allows me to scale. Yep. Like if I do that, now I can grow and now I'm, I'm not completely successful at that. And there's certain things where you can't escape doing it. One of the high paid jobs is to talk to, uh, to sellers if yeah. you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't go rush to give that away, but eventually you probably could put mm-hmm. somebody on commission to do what you did. Yeah. yeah. The exact I did, same thing. Like I do have bird dogs now under me, like, mm-hmm. like just find like the smaller deals. I try not to do any of that myself. Yeah. I have like, just the like big four fish. bird dogs that just like fish out deals for me and, you know, I help them assign them and then we kind of go. Like, you go, you, you take a split on it together. Yeah, yeah. I give pretty good splits actually. Actually, if they bring the whole deal, they get under contract and then, or I help them get in. You help them with dispo? And I help them with dispo, yeah. Is it often like your own dispo list or do you have other So one, one guy, Austin, he's like, I'm, we're primarily using Austin as uh, his dispo list. Okay. If it's like a deal where I, it's in a market that I know, I usually already have like certain people that I reach out to directly if, if I have yeah. a deal. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much, you know, it's interesting. So in the States, you can search a neighborhood for cash buyers, like who bought with cash in the last, <laughs> wow. last year. Oh, wow. And you could literally just skip trace those people and call them. Call them. <laughs> say, wow. Hey, I actually have a property around the corner from you. Are you interested in buying more? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. That's crazy. Oh, it's yeah. insane what you can do down there. Wow. But I assume that like, there's a lot more people doing that. Competition. As well. Yeah. Yes. But it's a big, uh, it's a big ocean. Like mm. there's there's a lot of space out there and, and you would think that everybody's doing it, but I think as long as you can have some sort of a niche, yeah. and I would think that's more of a niche approach, but, but for Dispo, I think that that would, that would be very useful. I have not actually done it So you're just myself. doing it in Florida itself right now? Right now, yeah, we're across Florida. Mm-hmm. We're So we're doing a pre-foreclosure list right now, mm-hmm. which we're finding that a little bit of that data is not really reliable. Do you pay for the data? Yeah, so I have a subscription that gets me access to the data. Uh, then we have to pay to skip trace it and scrub it for litigators and all that because we're we have a cold caller team yeah. that cold calls yeah. people, <laughs> and then those leads come in, and then we have an acquisitions team and okay. of uh, like managers who who will take pick up a lead and, and mm-hmm. try and close. Do they like ever meet the sellers in person, or is it just no? It's all we're all virtual right now. Our, our model is we'll we'll reach out to a local realtor yeah. uh, and we'll kind of dangle the carrot that hey, we we have this tied up. We need you to go out and confirm it's worth what we think it's worth Makes sense. and what you think you know we could sell it for quickly and that's what we've done with this first one that we've got coming yeah. up which i think i would describe it as probably a double or a triple not a home run but mm-hmm. i mean pretty close yeah uh, well the more you do the more home runs you're gonna get right you're gonna yeah. have to do a lot of singles and well, doubles. this one's just funny like it was just such a simple conversation like yeah. i we, we have the ability to listen back to calls and uh tyler our acquisition guy and one of our acquisition guys, he just called a guy and, you know, he had already done a little due diligence on the property. Have you ever considered selling? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously he answered the cold caller. Uh, have you thought of a number? And the guy just threw out 150, which was low already. Yeah. We could have done the deal at 150. He's like, hmm. It's like, well, I've crunched our numbers on our end and we'd need to be a little closer to 120. <laughs> <laughs> so we get it in that conversation, which was like 10 minutes. Yeah. We got the deal verbally. So he crunches numbers way. before, call, he crunched before. The numbers before yeah. calling. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which I told him not to do. I'm yeah. like, no, nah, just first, you know, figure out if they're actually motivated. Because it's a waste of time. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to do that. Like figure out if they're motivated first. Otherwise you're going to waste time. Yeah. But then, yeah, so he calls, he calls us or like, you know, hits us up in the, in the WhatsApp chat and like yeah. says, Hey, I think I got one. We listen to the call. We're like, yeah, you got one. Like, let's yeah. get it tied up. We, you know, we got the contract so you have signed. A, you have a VA doing the cold calls basically. Uh, so it's, it's a cold call center. We're going to bring on our own, mm-hmm. uh, but we've contracted it out for now. Sort of similar, like what yeah. you're doing. I just hired cold like calls. a full-time cold caller as well. Like yeah. Full-time. They're just calling like yeah. property management companies, realtors yeah. just saying, Hey, do you need a VA? That's really yeah. cool. That's really cool. So, uh, we'll be doing something similar. That's our next, we're actually, um, putting job postings up for that. Now we're going nice. to be interviewing and probably within two weeks, we'll have our own system for cold calling rolled out. So we'll have three callers that are employed by an agency mm-hmm. and then we'll have our own two and then we'll probably be at three acquisitions managers yeah. handling those leads. And that will be probably at that point over 20 leads a day. Wow. So there's a lot of follow up. There's a lot yeah. like that's a lot. So we're uh, I'll keep you busy. <laughs> yeah. So for anybody who's interested in working for Matt and I, you know, a little plug, uh, <laughs> Matt Piche and I, if you want to learn from us and, and work for us and make. 10% of the profit of the deals come hit us oh, up. Oh, strictly commission, not, yeah, not hourly. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so, you know, Tyler's going to make like, I think f- somewhere like 15, 16, 17. K wow. US wow. off of that one. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if all goes as planned, hey, yeah. there's no guarantees out there, right? Course, Anything yeah. could happen, but um, you know, we're pretty excited. So, if it. the deal was yeah. like, for example, this 120K one, if if the deal is really good enough and you can't find a buyer, would you go ahead and close yourself? Oh, we're closing. Oh, you're closing. You're closing. So yourself. our model is wholesale. So okay. we'll close. We'll list. And get proper exposure on the market. We'll wait. Mm-hmm. So these people get a quick close. We get a discount. Then we'll go back and. What we'll, are you like yeah. thinking your days on market would be? 
seed is land. Uh, it's it's a orange grove. Okay. So this was probably going to be like, um, I mean, minimum three months. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I could be wrong. Yeah. I, I would love to be wrong, but I'm banking on you know. Worst, I'm just figuring. Worst case scenario. I'm yeah. figuring three months, but okay. we're going to price it aggressively. Makes sense. Like. We, we know we could get more like 12, 13 an acre. We're going to price it just under 10 an acre. Okay. And, so. and uh, just go for a quick sale. Nice, yeah. Uh, the nice thing is the seller's got like, this family's got like 67 properties. Yeah, okay. In the <laughs> so county. Take down one at a time. In the county. So we're just trying, we just wanted to close this one because it was the sketchiest, weirdest transaction yeah, so far. Yeah, Like he'd disappear for a week and wouldn't answer any of the calls or anything. Yeah. We're like, did the guy vanish? Yeah. But then he'd pop right up. Hey, everything's all good. Yeah, I got the paperwork. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... Uh, my southern accent there um and uh, anyways yes yeah, so we're we're uh we're looking forward to getting that one closed and like anything like i don't know where you're at with this but like i never celebrate a, a transaction until it's like literally yeah. money in the bank or i got the deed <laughs> like <laughs> yeah no you can't celebrate too early yeah please. and i never do like yeah. you know it's because it's ne i've had so many deals fall apart over the years yeah so uh but yeah this one is is a pretty good um indication of what we think we could do and now we just want to scale 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 yeah that's awesome. like just take it to the next level and um yeah, in and the U.S., it's probably really easy to scale. Like, if, as long as you know how to build your systems, build your team. Well, that's the thing. Like, that's what I've spent the last, like, 15 years really learning is how to how to build systems and run a business like a business. And I I joke that I was, like, a professional wheel inventor, yeah. <laughs> you know, for, for so long. And now I just, I look at myself entirely differently. Like, if, if anything relies on me doing it, it probably won't get done because I have family obligations. I have multiple businesses that I'm involved in. Like, yep. I have to, you know, quarterback that ball. Yeah. And you're going to get to that point too. You already know you have VAs. Like mm -hmm. you, you know, you just pick the highest paid activities, and those are the ones you keep. Absolutely. Everything else, you got to delegate. Absolutely. And so many people can't relinquish that. They got they got their hand, their their grip on that. So tight. yeah, like I yeah. feel like some days, like you, you know, you wake up maybe a little bit later than normal, or you're at the gym or whatever. But people are always going to be working with. Like I have you know three, four full time yeah. people right now. So so yeah. they're always working. They're always doing. I know things are getting done because that, yeah, like, you know. So like even when I'm not technically doing work. What I am, mm -hmm. what I do focus on is like figuring out what they're going to do and how they're going to yeah. add value to, you know, my business. Right. Right. And how, like, talk about how you empower VAs to actually be able to help you. Cause I know some people, including myself early on when I hired my VA, <laughs> like I, I didn't get her all the passwords. She wasn't into everything. <laughs> and I hesitated a yeah. lot, like, and, and it, it just, all that it did was it made that I, it made it so that I couldn't delegate to yeah. her. So what are some of the things you do to really help empower yourself to be able to delegate? So I have one like really good VA that's been with me for a very long time. So I trust her with mm -hmm. everything. And she's like, like I'm, I'm feeding her family and all that. So she's mm -hmm. like, she's, she's with me for a very long time. So, um, I, what I do is I have at least one, one time a week or two times a week, I have like team meetings. Um, and I, like, you know, I'm all motivated during mm -hmm. these meetings and I'm, I'm uh, so she kind of handles like management of the other VAs as well. Mm -hmm. So like f me and her are kind of like, like day to day, we're just communicating throughout the day. Um, and then she kind of like manages the rest of the team. So in terms of like keeping them motivated, I feel like it's uh, it, like, I, I can't really gauge the motivation. Like I can't say, like I can't see them face to face and I mm -hmm. don't know how motivated they are, but mainly like I really focus on results mm -hmm. and I really focus on, um, okay, at the end of the week, send me a, you know, I use job form, but they send me like a, like a list of, okay, cold caller, how many calls did you make? How many yeah. like warm leads did you get? Hot leads? Um, and how many inter appointments yeah. or whatever that did you make? Um, and I, I really focus on, on results. So if, if they didn't yeah. perform during the week, I asked them, okay, why, what, what can we, can we do to improve? Um, what things can we change? What resources do you need? I really focus on um, how can I make their experience better yeah. and how can I, mm -hmm. like, how can they make their job easier? Yeah. Right. Can you listen to their calls? I can, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do that. That's key. <laughs> I listen to the ones that are like over a minute long so I can see what they're, anything under a minute is yeah. probably like, like, I can do buy. you have a script for them to follow yeah, when they course. call? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Do they make like jokes about being foreign VAs or? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, during the calls? Yeah. Uh, not really. Like, I, because I mean, Canada is a melting pot. So yeah. like everyone has an accent and, yeah. and whatever. I usually like, <laughs> I tell them to say like, we're local, they're local. Right. So yeah, I usually pretty much just let them know like we're local yeah. to GTA or Toronto. So they, which, yeah, like you could have any accent under the yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on earth and, and you yeah. could be from Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. Some of the areas were like in, in Florida, like they're kind of more rural and probably less receptive mm -hmm. to 
uh, foreign VAs, like our, our call center, like allegedly, I haven't heard any of their voices, don't really have accents. Okay. Like they, they sound like they could be from America. Yeah, that's one of my yeah. criteria like yeah. for a cold caller. Like I would make sure that they speak fluent English and they're not over, like they don't have a crazy Like a pretty accent. tame accent. Yeah. The, the Filipino accent, like there is like a Spanish or like a Spanish uh, There's a influence There's there, a very right? Small hint, yeah. Yeah. So it could, they, you know, they, for uh, for us, like it could sound like, you know, a South American Spanish yeah. accent, potentially <laughs> if we yeah. hire, if we hire, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, but I know one guy, he like, he just has his cold callers make a joke. He's like, uh, just so you know, uh, we are, we are VAs. We're from Philippines, yeah. <laughs> but we work for a local investor. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I've never, never tried that, but that, that's honestly a good idea. Who disarm, like, right? Yeah, like, yeah. oh, thank you. We, we got that out of the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, get to the point. What are you selling? You know? Yeah. You know? What are you selling? Yeah. That's, that's the key. Like, and that's the hard part of like breaking the ice. Like I listen back to these calls and I hear these, you know, these people are after the cold caller and they're still pretty cold. Mm -hmm. They're, they're like, yeah. And it just paused. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm calling you because you, uh, you mentioned that you had an interest in selling your building. Well, if the price is right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is going very well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of that. Like, yeah. I know you're not really getting that with what you're doing, although you probably do with your mailers a fair bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like, you know, Hey, you sent me a letter. What are you going to pay me? What, mm -hmm. what are you going to give me for it? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you, I assume you get that a little bit. Uh, yeah, well, not like if someone's calling me directly, mm -hmm. like, um, well, they're responding to to one of your mailers. Yeah. Or what I, have you. I, the way I disarm them is like, I, I say like, if they're straight up asking me, what are you going to pay? I'm like, okay, well, I want to like, tell me about yourself first. I'm, I, I'll tell you about myself what mm -hmm. I do. And then that's, that's how I kind of start yeah. conversation rather than just focusing on the building itself. Yeah. You know? So, but if they are, you know, strictly numbers, strictly, you know, how many yeah. doors, whatever, then, you know, then I'll just ask, okay, how many units do you connect? Can you send me like some numbers about the building? Maybe yeah. my numbers get this back is to for you. your multifamily. Yeah, leads. This is for but, yeah, but your general neighborhood leads, those will be a little, um, a little different. Yeah, like, like yeah. I usually ask, like, what, what I try to get an idea of how much, they yeah, want. what they want. Yeah. Do you, I mean, where I'm at right now, like, the thing we're trying to do is, is eliminate time spent on people who are tire kicking. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't really want to sell, but they got a call and they're curious if we'll overpay for their property. Yeah. yeah. Uh, those, I think that's probably about half the leads. Okay. And then the other half are actually like, you know, have a motivation to sell, but it's like, where are they? You know, how motivated? You got to figure it out, right? Yeah. Those ones are worth spending time on, but the ones that just want to... Yeah. They want fishing. the highest and best price. Like, yeah. they like, they want above market value. Like, yeah, know, yeah. there's no point of wasting I think time. a realtor is for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I straight up tell people, yeah. like, like honestly, your best bet is just listing it with the realtor. You're going to get the highest and best price. We, we focus on creating, giving creative solutions to, to people that are, you know, in need yeah. of these solutions. So... Yeah. Yeah. And for, for you, like with the multis, like that's like, you have so many angles there. Well, Hey, you don't have an environmental. Oh, okay. Well, building condition analysis report. Okay. Um, Hey, you know what? Any, any buyer, they're going to need to do all that stuff. I can make it real easy. You probably yeah. still want those reports, but yeah, hundred uh, <laughs> percent. Yeah. yeah I you still, still need a them. conditional period. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're getting a conditional period, but, uh, you know, you're not, you're probably not needing to go as far no. appraisal. You don't need to do not even appraisal. If there's yeah. seller financing, it's, mm -hmm. it's a little different. So yeah. So yeah. you can kind of streamline that process yep. make it easier yeah do, do you really focus on that hey well i'll just make it really easy on you um i i do need to do certain due diligence like if i mm -hmm. do want to close on it myself i do need to yeah. like environmentals i'm not like if i do close on it like typically the like how i i do commercial financing so uh credit unions they typically don't really need environmentals yeah. um some people say it's good to do it and it, it is good to do we it. do it on anything we buy yeah for... but it's it's expensive <laughs> so it depends if you're just a phase one you're not too bad yeah yeah, yeah it's like 2500 for that building condition is 2500 yeah appraisals 25 3500 yeah so you're in it like, you know, 10, 15 grand. Yeah, like 10 grand. Yeah, easily. But you need to make sure that you're actually, the numbers are actually are actually going to pencil out and it actually mm -hmm. makes sense when, like before you actually start doing that. But uh, generally speaking, if I'm already, if the numbers make sense, then I'll mm -hmm. probably go ahead anyways and do the due diligence like, you know, after I firm up or like, like right before. Oh, you'll still, you'll just do that later. You know, you're like gonna appraisal, buy it anyway. if, like appraisal. I kind of generally know what buildings appraisals are going to end up being just with the cap rate and stuff. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you already kind of know, like you don't need to confirm the value because yeah. like that's sort of your work. Yeah. And building condition report. Yeah. You, you do need to. Uh, yeah. You that. need to know what life cycle items are coming, yeah. budget for that. And you can use that as a negotiation piece. Oh yeah. That's, that's the main, that's yeah. the main reason why I do it. Yeah. So yeah. it says here, your roof's like basically done. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to cost me like 25 grand. Yeah. How are we going to, how are got, we going to manage Like that? I did like a nine plex. It was like the, I had it under for like nine forty, and I just, I I showed them, I made like an entire report saying mm -hmm. what is wrong with the building, the roof, boiler, mm -hmm. like the units, there's mold, like mm -hmm. I, every single thing I needed to fix, I got it down to 800. Mm -hmm. um, and then with like, I added VTB and all. So what was 
it before the 800? 940. So you had a 940. You said, hey, this is all the stuff I'd have to fix. I have no problem taking care of it. I just need to deduct that. I from, said there's 200K worth of work, but I'm, I'm willing to kind of you yeah. know, work with you and get us a little smaller for discount. Yeah. So. Would it really have cost you 200? Or um, you could probably do it I mean, for less. I could probably do it for less. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, hey, depending on which contractor you hire, it yep. could be more than 200. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you, you negotiate like that, and then you're still trying to get VTBs. And how many how many have you successfully done that with? Like VTBs? Well, just like negotiate from your list, from your endeavors of looking people up and building the list. Like, how many deals have you closed for yourself? I guess just those two. So I have a yeah. ten unit right now in my portfolio. I have a six unit, a four mm -hmm. unit, and then the rest of them I kind of just flipped, like even yeah. triplexes and duplexes and stuff. I've just flipped. So um, you closed them and then sold them? Yeah, no, yeah. not really. Like I closed them in, with the intention of like burying them with yeah. like refinancing, but I, I end up refinancing them and then just sell them to get the equity and put into a big, bigger deal. Okay, gotcha. Um, so um, yeah, well, so, I mean, in terms of deal. So when I first started, the main thing I was just, uh, I, I was an acquisitions manager. So, I was so yeah, that was for Mina? For Mina, yeah. So, so I was, you probably did a ton of deals I just did there. Like, a, like 24 unit, a, like a 10 yeah. unit, a 16 unit. Like I've That's done, a confidence builder. Right yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All, all for himself. Like I didn't even, yeah. I wasn't even thinking about Did you get paid a commission or Of just, course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so like on a per door basis kind of thing. So, and then now I'm really trying to focus on my own portfolio. Yeah. Um, yeah. So would you say you've done, like out of your own efforts, have you done 25, 35 transactions like um, in that ballpark? Or? Within multifamily, I would say so, yeah. 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 And obviously most of them wholesaled. Yeah. And then the, other one, the ones that you bought, you yeah, acquired a lot yourself. Of them, a lot of them like really don't really work out. Yeah. Like if, even if they want like a fair market price mm -hmm. for a building, like, uh, like it's hard to make that work if you don't really have like insane amount of capital. Like if mm -hmm. you don't, if they're not willing to do VTB, but they want a fair price, mm -hmm. um, Usually speaking, like it's probably better for them to just list it or refer them to like a realtor or something. But, um, but yeah, I, I try not to take anything that's really, um, like not sweet enough of a deal. Like I, it needs to make, like I'm still young, like we have no money partners or anything like that. So yeah. I, I have to really pick and choose what I'm really investing. So what, in. what are you looking for, for a deal that you're going to close on? Um, I can give you like an example, like I just closed like yeah. the 10 unit, um, oh, oh, numbers sure. here, yeah. <laughs> um, so the 10 unit, maybe I won't get too deep into the numbers cause I, I just closed on it and it's like, I can talk about one that I've already refinanced and successfully. Uh, sure. Completed. Yeah. Um, so what'd you, uh, would you buy that one for? So that one, so that one was one that was falling up for like two years to get. <laughs> and, uh, I ended up, so it's the sixplex. Um, mm -hmm. so I bought it for 450, um, and it was fully vacant. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's, that's located mainly in the Chatham? Reason. It was in Sarnia. Sarnia. Okay. Um, so that one, I, so I bought it for 450. The reason why it was fully vacant, the seller was trying to do all of the work himself. And he was just like, after work, he was just trying to like mm -hmm. you know, be handyman type work. And, uh, two years later it was in the exact same condition. He just did like plumbing. Vacant for two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, uh, so you need like the rent roll right now, what it is. Um, yeah, sure. Give, what, what was the, uh, the so acquisition was four fifty, and I got a seventy seven percent VTB in second position. Okay, uh, with zero percent interest. And did you did you uh, have to renovate a little bit? I had to put a lot of money into this. Yeah, it was like gutted basically. Okay, so you paid four fifty. You got a seventy seven percent. Yeah, in second. Yeah. Oh, in second. Yeah. So then you got a first as well. I got a first for two hundred. So, so the, so the second mortgage was 350, the first was 200. So I was, I put basically over hundred percent loan to value on the property. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend okay. this if you okay, know, it's okay. not vacant and stuff, but yeah. Okay. So you were over a hundred, hundred percent loan to value. How much, what was your rental cost? Um, it was, um, just over, like I would say 250 K is what I spent in total on top of the okay. 450. And then did you go back and refinance right after that? Yeah. It, uh, I refinanced in about 10 months. Okay. And what was your, your rent on it? Um, so right now it's generating, uh, 10, six, seven, nine a month. And that's, uh, including like $700 a month with solar panels. The seller installed oh. like a 60 grand set of solar panels. I don't know why. Interesting. But... <laughs> not, not, not a great move, I guess. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, so you were in for 700. What are your property taxes? Ballpark? Um, I would say, uh, let, let's put it closer to 750 with interest and all like all the fees and whatnot. Let's just put it at 750. Okay. So like 750. Worst case scenario. Um, it's probably like 740, 745, I would say. Cool. Um, property taxes are? Uh, 3624 a year. Nice. Uh, insurance is 20, 2242. Oh, wow. That's cheap. Yeah. Um, and then 5% maintenance, 5% management, okay. I use 3% vacancy. 
Okay, three percent vacancy. And uh, do you have like garbage, snow, lawn? Um, I so yeah, I, that's usually in maintenance. But I hundred bucks a month, I would say like for for all those combined. Yeah, yeah. Do you have like a bin on site? I have a bin on site. It's it's in Sarnia. It's really cheap because there's a government grants. It's like I think like eighteen dollars a month. For, oh really? For the bin. Yeah, oh, that's like crazy. A six yard bin. So twelve hundred a year covers snow removal, lawn care. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a really small parking lot? And no, it's huge. <laughs> I paved the whole part. It's like a nice big How is it lot. that cheap to get snow removal? Oh, okay. Because I have my tenant, like one of my tenants doing it. Oh, so okay. Like, so you just like give them a kickback? And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So really 1200 covers you for all that stuff. Yeah. But I would say put 5% like just as a, you know, like for oh, maintenance. Oh, for 5% maintenance? I still do. Yeah. I consider maintenance more like paint, oh, repairs, repairs okay. yeah, yeah, like all that stuff. Not even a replacement reserve. Uh but I mean that's fine. Like you just renovated it, so yeah. that'll give us an There's idea. There's literally like like all new plumbing, all new electrical, yeah. all new like HVAC. There's yeah. new pumps. There's yeah. everything pretty much. Mm -hmm. So, so what uh, what did you get it appraised for when it was done? So I appraised at one point four three. One point four three. Yeah. Wow, that's a big lift. Yeah. All right. So and then you got a seventy five percent mortgage. Yeah. Oh, uh, actually, no, 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 no. I it was a lot lower than that. It was like the new mortgage is nine twenty. 920? Yeah. Okay, so that's close to like 70? It's, I think no, it's just 65. under 70. Yeah, yeah. Maybe 68? Yeah, in the future, obviously. You, you said know, 975? 920, 920 is a new one. Okay, mortgage. so. Yeah, that's in, that's in the 65% ballpark. Yeah. Uh, years, probably 25 year amortization. Yeah. And then what interest rate did you uh, get? 7.05 for two 7. years. 7.05. Ah, you got one of those high interest rates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> two grand like, cash flow on that though. Yeah. Yeah. It's not bad. So you're in perfect, perfect burr on that one. You actually pulled out, looks like a couple of hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Not yeah. a bad day at the office. Not bad, yeah. So these are the deals like I'm looking for, like there's home run. So, kind of so burst. obviously you made it on the buy. He sold, he undersold it. That's why I over. He was just fed up, yeah. fed up on it. Yeah. Um, no, he, he had cancer. So, um, yeah. uh, he, he was going to finish it himself, but yeah. Yeah, I kind of came in at a good, like I kept following up and I, did you, did he give you that number or did you ha hammer him for so it? So he actually want, he actually wanted less. He actually, oh, yeah. I offered more just because I was able to get the VTB. Like he was willing to walk away with 425. Okay. Um, but I, I told him, you know, I'll give you like, he didn't really want to do the VTB. He wanted the cash, um, you know, just move on. Uh, so yeah. I, I, I convinced him like, give me two years. Um, I'll get it done in a lot less than that, but, but worst case two years and, and, uh, and I'll give you a better price. So 450, you know, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a. And did you put interest on that VTV? No, it was zero percent for the first six months. After yeah. that, it was like six percent. So there was a bit yeah. of interest after the six months, and then yeah. there was like twelve percent on the first mortgage. I love that you can just negotiate all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so hey, as you know, Mr. Seller, I'm not making any money for that first. You know, let's call it twelve months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do this. Yeah. I'm gonna pay you more on the acquisition. Yeah. We're gonna do interest free for the first year. Yeah. And like. You probably could have negotiated that if you just like kind of positioned it that yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, most people would have just like, okay, yeah. they're getting it at a really good price. I'll yeah, yeah. A lot it, of people you know? just like, okay, that's good enough. I'm already getting a good deal. <laughs> I love the mentality where you're already going to get a good deal, but you still make it better. Okay, now let's see if we yeah. can go. You Especially know. if it doesn't really affect them. Like, yeah, it doesn't affect them. They're getting them. a better price. Yeah. Like at the end yeah. of the day, they're going to get paid more. Yeah, they get paid more. It's a win-win. Yeah. So, so you might as well keep asking yeah. and then you know make make it a truly sweet deal. Yeah. Um, anything that you wish I had asked you about that I haven't? Um, not really. I think, uh, I think we covered a lot. Um, yeah. yeah so I'm just looking to get into the big, bigger buildings and stuff. Uh, the 10 unit I closed on, it's on six acres of land in Sarnia as well. So okay, maybe so you've future, got some development potential. Yeah. It's in the new development area of Sarnia. So there's like single families being built yeah. like right next door. So maybe down. Do the you line. have extra fronting land? Is it on a corner? Uh, it's not on a corner. It's the buildings right at the back. So, so I can like sever in mm -hmm. single family lots, probably sell off the lots in the future mm -hmm. maybe, but there's, it's on septic. So that's kind of, I have to wait the, until the, the 10 unit is on septic. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. There's like five septic tanks. So, but probably as part of your development agreement, you could agree to bring in the sewer for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is there a sewer at the main road? There's, there's no sewer at the main road. It's oh, like, so it's like the option maybe yet. 700 meters down. So I'd have to. Well, you'd probably get a deal done real quick if you'd volunteer to do that. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> there so. was a developer that, that uh, redid the sewer and water main in, uh, of an entire major street wow. in Burlington on uh, Ontario street, sorry, Maple. 
Ave all the way up to the mall, yeah. all the way down so that they could build their apartment building. Wow. And I get a credit against development charges. It's insane. Yeah. Like it's absolutely insane what they'll make uh, developers yeah. do. Yeah. And then they'll yeah. do whatever you want then if you're going yeah, well, to hey, cover all those costs. <laughs> as long as you're going to pay for all that. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. So, so yeah, they, they seem to hold the power anyway. Yeah. So cool. maybe get into developing like uh, maybe multifamily down the line, but obviously yeah. just, I want to secure some nice properties with big lands. Like that's kind of what like long. I mean, goal. it sounds like you're setting yourself up to be, you know, you've got your career trajectory set and you just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. You plan on starting a family? Um, yeah, not anytime soon, like yeah. maybe down the line, but I definitely want to like keep grinding in your twenties or no. Um, yeah, maybe late twenties, late twenties, okay. late twenties. We're still, still kind of in our growth, growth phase. Like, do it early, man. I, yeah. that's, that's. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. There's a lot of things I want to accomplish before that. So I hear you. I, I hear definitely you. want to drive a Lambo before I have uh, kids. So. so Lambo, Lambo's on the list. Lambo's on the list. Yeah. How soon are you planning the Lambo? No, not not anytime soon. Like I, I have like stuff. You'll just know you've made it yeah. when you got the Lambo. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. All right. So where do people find you and reach you? Follow so you? my real estate company, Fergo States. That's my Instagram. Uh, my virtual assistant company is called Task Tuesday. Um, yeah, that's reach out to me on Instagram. If, if you have any, want to reach out, connect. I those are on Instagram. Both of those yeah, are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can include those handles. Sure. In yeah. the, I'm assuming you already sent over your I should your social that. stuff. Yes. Yeah, send, yeah. send that over <laughs> soon. Cause yeah. this will actually be out this weekend. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So this one's a, we don't have a lot in the bank right now, so we got to get a few more interviews yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Good. All right. Well, thanks for doing yeah, this. Thank you so know, much for having me. Yeah. Maybe I'll come on in a couple of years, share my journey from them. Yeah. Well, I'd love to keep in touch. Yep. And uh, yeah, your friend of the show, just hit me up and, you know, we can have you on our hot seat too. We can go over yep. some deal crunching, number sure. crunching. Absolutely. Uh, be great. Sounds All good. right. Thanks, All right. Jude.